Hi, I'm Edgar, and in a few recent videos, I've mentioned creating new bodies to use up all of the spare parts that you commonly get with plastic model kits, especially wargaming kits which often come with several options. I've ended up with this massive collection of plastic that I've been accumulating over the last several decades of model building, and most of the plastic kits that I've built, pretty much all of them, have some amount of options with different weapons, different pouches, arm poses, and even facial expressions. But once you've built the intended models, all of those options that you didn't choose are left over. And what do you do with these? Stack them in the bits box for the rest of time? Throw them away? Make a ball of arms monster? Okay, that last one sounds a lot of fun, I should do that. Anyway, as they're so nicely molded and sculpted, it feels a shame to not use them for something. If only there was some way of getting the new bodies, just the body part of the model that isn't left over. That way you could just end up with some extra new models by using up those spare parts. There are, honestly, an absurd number of ways to make new bodies, uh, but I'd like to give some examples of how I've been doing it recently to see if I can inspire any of you to do similar things. Now, of course, for certain games with restricted IP, you might have to be careful about how you go about this. Uh, recasting or directly copying might not be acceptable, and even creating something that's too similar may also be problematic. It all depends on the parts and what game they're intended for. And whilst I will mention a lot of 3D printing in this video, I will touch on some other methods as well. One example for creating new bodies that I have shown quite a few times is the DeVic Designs torso with cloak intended for Celtic Guardians. And I've been using these for my Gaunt's Ghosts army. I've been making videos about them for over a year, so you've probably already seen that. Uh, but I'm sticking with the 70% rule, as it is 40k and you know, limited IP, and that means that 70% of the model, most of the model, has to be original. And that means in this case, only the torso gets replaced to add to the cloak. And whilst that means I get some nice cloaks for my model, each one is made from one original model, and so none of the spare parts get used. So let's look further afield. Wandering around Thingiverse, I found a few sets of multi-part orcs, which is fantastic for me, as I can print off the bodies and use up some of my many orc heads and arms that I have. I ended up using a few bodies from different creators, uh, Throlek and Cobra Surfer are the ones I've linked in the description. For these orcs, instead of using the 40k accoutrement, I have brought in the more fantasy styled parts. Spears and bows and that sort of thing. I have plenty of 40k orcs, I don't need any more, but having a band of fantasy orcs to interrupt an RPG session, now that's something that might come in handy someday. Well that's all good with those with 3D printers, although I can mention you don't need a 3D printer yourself. You can easily get a friend or someone at a local gaming group to print something for you, and then you don't have to fix the printer every three prints. The best of all worlds. But there are other options, so let's have a look at some old-fashioned sculpting. A little while ago I sculpted this torso and legs out of various modelling clays to test the differences. Obviously I've been using a lot of Milliput recently, but this Fimo oven cure clay is really easy to add detail to, and so I might start using that for parts that don't have to be touching plastic when curing, as, you know, the plastic would melt in the oven. As you see, the torso didn't really line up the arms very well, as this was my first attempt, and so I milliputted those gaps to finish the model. And after this I had another go at making one from just milliput. Uh, I decided to make a big long coat, or great coat, looking thing, as this gives me a relatively simple design to sculpt, and, you know, my second attempt at all, I want something simple, but it is somewhat generic and so could probably be used parts from different kits. My first lump was just crudely sculpted into shape with some belts around the torso and collar. I expect I would have an easier time if I had used some form of an armature. I compared this lump to a bolt action model in 28mm scale, cut away the excess and went for another layer of sculpting, just filling in the flaps of the cloaks and the boots. And the boots look horrid. Uh, so I'll certainly need more practice with sculpting to, uh, to do better work there. Once fully cured, I scraped this down with the back of a knife and sanded off camera, and at this point I actually made a silicon mould of the body so I can make more of them without having to sculpt it every time. 
The master version got some parts for bolt action Soviets, and I did make a second one with parts from the Dead Man's Hand cowboy set. And I painted both of these a little while ago, so you tell me, how do they look? I will certainly improve at sculpting at some point, just need to put the time in. For another option, I'll mention the companies that make bits, such as Victoria Miniatures, Anvil Industries, and Spellcrow. These are often more arms and heads to make different styles of models from your originals, but there are also often complete sets of parts to make entire models. And for our purposes today, we'll look at just the torso and legs, and we can use those with our mass collection of spare arms. Cena and Arilla here were made with Victoria Miniatures bits and Games Workshop arms and weapon. In total, this is probably pushing the 70% rule I mentioned earlier. I have a video making these from way back in my Gaunt's Ghost playlist, so if you'd like more information, you can have a look at that. And I also have yet another video that's coming soon using some Spellcrow parts. Well, I guess that's spoilers for that video. To round back to 3D printed models and finish up this video, I will mention the struggles I've been facing with doing specifically bolt action models. And the reason why this is more difficult is because I cannot find specific files to print. I can't find, say, British 8th Army or Soviet or American. And so what I've had to do is digitally kitbash my own, and I've ended up learning quite a few skills along the way. The main parts that I have used here were a Gamberson by Yavis and the Sculptress set by Dutch Mogul. The first thing to contend with these parts are the attachments. As they are not designed to be used with the arms that I want to use them with, these contact surfaces just won't match. I could print them and physically cut them off, but to make things a little easier on myself, I will crudely slice them away in the software. The next is to make sure they are the correct scale, which they obviously aren't, but that's an easy fix. I have found that a scaling model is really, really helpful. This one by RubyB just happens to be the one I use. She's a 2832 hero scale model, so if I put the parts in the software next to her, or even kind of superimpose it, I can compare, and I can be sure that I'm close enough uh, to do a test print and then maybe adjust it after that. And all this is pretty easy, just kind of stubbornly poking it for a few minutes until you get something decent enough to print. However, you could go a lot further. I got stuck in with Blender. I found a tutorial for rigging, which means making a skeleton so you can pose a model, and that wasn't actually all that difficult, surprisingly easy, and only took about 20 minutes. With another Blender tutorial, I tried sculpting on some different details onto the shirts. This wasn't as successful as I had hoped it would be, but you can see that it is at least something. With the Gamberson torso, I used quilted Soviet uniform, which goes together quite nicely. With Dutch Mogul's part, I used a ninja shirt for the summer Soviet uniform, as well as that same ninja shirt and some shorts for my British. These aren't perfect by a long way, but putting backpacks and pouches and all that kind of thing on the model does hide those imperfections and uses up even more spare parts. Most recently, the American models, again using pouches to hide where they don't perfectly match the original design. I have since found that Desktop Hero has a perfect torso for US troops. Ah, if only I had known. Well, too late for that now. I've printed a bunch of them. Uh, yeah, scratch that. I have actually bought the Desktop Hero ones. I'll just have to pull the arms off and redo them. Well, that's all that lot said. What do you lot think? I've worked pretty hard on these various options, so is it worth it to rescue these spare parts, kind of bulking out units with models that aren't always looking perfect? And how are my efforts with my sculpting, kind of buying bits as well, and 3D printing? There are plenty of options out there, but sometimes you do need to work at them. And if you have any ideas at home, I'll certainly be interested in looking into some suggestions and some ideas. Well, that's a big old info dump out of the way, but for now, I'm Edgar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.